Today on Locked On Red Wings, a vital and difficult February is upon us. What is the expectation for Detroit to stay in the playoff hunt ahead of the deadline? Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ news radio podcast. Well, Scotty's host over at Lockdown Tigers and a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 dollars in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your first bet wins. Visit fanduel.com slash lockdown to get started. Scotty, happy Tuesday. I hope your I hope the Super Bowl treated you well, either in entertainment value or in pocket value, uh, depending on how you enjoy your your football. Yeah, I uh a little bit. We made out in the green when it was all said and done. Not a whole lot, but <laughs> you know. Um a, a little bit. Yeah, I had a couple of fan duel uh Little little bets hit, but uh, did not win any squares. So yeah, for me it was the complete opposite. I hit a square, made made my money back, and then some. But none of those Fanduel bets hit. I'm a, nice. I not that's yeah. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. But we don't need <laughs> to delve right. into my gambling history, that's Scotty. Right. Uh, we got a jam-packed show for the people today. Segment one, we're going to talk about the important February that is ahead of the Red Wings. They already booked one W, but they have a lot more. And a Western Canada road trip's not going to make it any easier. Uh, then segment two, we're going to talk about Billy Huso. Derek Lalone did say he will play at some points. So we'll discuss maybe where the best possible place to play him is. And then in segment three, we're just going to preview the Edmonton Oilers. Pretty bog standard in that regard. Uh, so let's dive right into segment one then without further ado. Uh, I, that's one of my, I keep saying that. I've noticed that the last few weeks. I say without further ado a lot. But Well, it is without further ado. Without further ado. Anyways. Uh, the Red Wings finish up their what six game homestand four one and one only losing to the Stars in regulation and then the Senators in overtime. Very good homestand to finish off a really strong January and a good start to February because that was the final game in the homestand. Homestand on the other side of the All Star break. Good time to get that two points heading onto a difficult Western Canada road trip in the month of February. Scotty, the Red Wings play Edmonton tonight. By the time the people are listening to this, Vancouver on. Thursday, Calgary over the weekend, actually, yeah, over the weekend, and then Seattle on President's Day to finish up their Western Canada plus Seattle road trip. Come home for Colorado, St. Louis at Chicago. Come home for Washington and the Islanders. This is a really crucial month for the Detroit Red Wings. Last year, they swept the Western Canada portion of the road trip and only lost to Seattle. That catapulted them back into the wild card race. They held on to a wild card spot before getting shut out and being goalied by Andre Vasilevsky and then losing back to backs against Ottawa. They were so good in the month of February before those three straight losses that Eisman was thinking about not selling at the deadline and just letting the team ride it out. In hindsight, I think it was probably better off that they did kind of bottom out when they did because you know, you were able to get some return on assets that were going to help you in the future. But you know, this year you're already in a playoff spot. So having a crucial February, it's just as vital. So my question is, is what is the expectation either win wise or point wise to make sure come March 8th, you're not in the same position. You don't put Steve Eisman in the same position that you were last year. Well, I think you're off to a great start <laughs> with that, right? I mean, this is uh last year. The, the, the biggest difference in my head is that the February, last year catapulted you into the conversation and you weren't right now if they're not to be in the conversation at the deadline that would be a huge collapse right you're you're talking about two different uh ways to arrive at a similar point here so i think that really the biggest thing is is the work that's already been done honestly in my head i mean obviously don't have a catastrophic collapse i guess i could say that right don't don't completely fall apart and crumble to the point where you're not even in the playoff picture by the deadline. That would, you know, that feels like it's not really analysis. That's just like nobody here wants to see that, obviously. Um, I, honestly, I think the heavy lifting for that question has already been done. I, I think that your January 
prevented that uh, from the, for the most part. Um, and again, there's always a chance of uh, they play the games for a reason. There's always a chance yeah. that they go out there and 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 they just start losing like crazy and they lose all the momentum they have, I guess. But uh, I I really do think that the the biggest thing to prevent the team from being like, oh, it's a toss up, but we're gonna lean sell. Uh, is already what the work that they've put in in January. You are in a playoff spot on February 12th, February 13th, as you're listening to this. You're you're firmly in a postseason spot, um, and I, I think that uh, that the the last six weeks has done more than anything really that they can do positive uh, traction wise. Um, from now until the deadline. Yeah, but that can change really fast, right? If they go out there and they have the reverse of what they did in January, they revert back to the way they were in December, they can quickly find themselves back out of that wild sure. card spot. And then Eisenman will have no choice but to sell at the deadline. So for me, in my personal opinion, the expectation of February and the two first, the two points that you just got facing the uh, Vancouver Canucks is a, is a great start. But for me, the expectation is you got to at least get 12 out of the 20 points, I believe. Yeah, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You got to get at least 12 out of 20 points, sure. whether that be six and four or four, four and two, whatever it, it may be. Like you've got to get the, uh, the, the the 12 points in this month because that math didn't make sense just now, but you get my point. You got to get 12 of 20 points in this month, stay above 500 to stay afloat in the race because while, yes, you're one point back of third in the Atlantic division because Tampa's got 61 and you're tied for the first wild card with the Leafs at 60. The Islanders are only 56, only four points back. That's two wins. If you lose three in a row, lose four in a row, just like that, you could be out of the playoff picture. So in my opinion, the bar, the bare minimum points wise that the Red Wings have got to accomplish is 12 points. And I think that, I think it is doable. It's a tough month because again, we already beat Vancouver, thankfully, but Edmonton, they had their 16-game win streak snapped, and we'll talk about them in segment three, but they're a really good hockey team. Vancouver, again, even though you beat them in overtime, they're still a really good hockey team. Calgary's going streaking right now. They've been hot and cold throughout the year, but right now they're hot. Seattle's starting to get their stuff together. You know, Colorado, you can't sleep on. St. Louis and Chicago. and It's those last four that I think are four that you have absolutely got to have. One, because Washington Islanders, you're competing for a wild card spot with. But then also St. Louis and Chicago aren't very good this year. So like those last four, especially, have got to be W's. And if you can split this road, if you can just go two and two on the Western Canada portion of this road trip, the Western Canada road trip in general, I it'll be a successful road trip and that'll set you up really nicely in the last four games. But no win is a given, you know? Yeah, no. And that's the reason we're having this conversation is because the schedule – is so difficult and you, and you do have a, a tall task, I guess, ahead. But yeah, obviously the goal is to, is to keep your head above water. And, and and again, like I said, just not collapse and not crumble and not, you know, lose, like you said, three, four, five games in a row and find yourself next thing, you know, uh, have that cushion that you have evaporated and, uh, and have you out of the postseason. So yeah, man, I, I, uh, I, I, I wasn't trying to over like sell the security of the position they're in. There's still a lot of hockey to be played. And there you, again, we play a very tough schedule. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing anything. Um, but when comparing and contrasting in a vacuum just to last year, uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, we were having a conversation of, Oh, you have to like sweep the West coast road trip to even be remotely in the conversation for the postseason." Um, and I guess that my, my point is, if the wings are just outside of the postseason by a point, two points, whatever, come trade deadline, that still doesn't mean guaranteed sell. That's not how close they were last year. You know what I mean? They they, yeah. they got really hot, and, and then obviously the Ottawa thing happened, and then they never really got that close uh, after selling, rightfully so. You know, to be fair to them, but um, I, I think that there's uh, there's a big difference in in how they get there again if there's a huge collapse and you're six seven eight points out of it by the deadline then yeah you're, you're probably gonna sell but um being a point or two out of the postseason at the deadline doesn't mean sell mode guaranteed is my point i uh, know i agree that being a point or two out of it is not a guarantee sell mode but i just feel i'm like, like i'm gonna ask you like do you have in your head like a point total they have to achieve for you to be comfortable as to not sell at the deadline and like be 
fully bought into the playoff chase? Um, I don't know. I know I'm asking I, you to really generalize and boil it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if there's a point total from like here to the deadline. I mean, if they – I guess it's similar to yours in a more generic term. Like if they, if they get – even slightly over 50% of the points available. I think that that's, you know, again, that's keeping yourself in it at a minimum. Um, I think for, for me, it's, it's much more contingent on your standing within the standings, <laughs> I guess, than it is like exact, you know what I mean? Cause we can do whatever, but we're, we're, there's a lot of things out of our control and a lot of teams obviously that aren't, uh, part of that conversation. So I think that probably has more to do with it than me, than um, like an exact point total for the wings to put up. Well, and that's why taking care of your own business is so vital. That's Absolutely. why taking care of and getting as many wins as possible in the bank. So you don't have to rely on other teams, which is something that they've done to your credit to psych circle back around to where you began the conversation. They did a lot of the work in January to put their future ahead of them to control their own destiny. Right. And yeah, now right. it's just, continuing to roll, have that ball roll, that momentum build and going on Western Canada. And I'll be in February. If they can get, I'll finish it off going back to where I started. If in February, they can get 12 of 20 points and split Western Canada, the Western Canada road trip plus Seattle, those five games or four games, whatever it is, four games. I'll be happy. That'll, that'll put them in a really good position to just continue to have control of their own destiny. We got segment two. And when we come back, we'll talk about Billy Huso. Speaking of Western Canada, we keep bringing it up. Lalone did say he has to play, so we'll talk about where the best situation for him may be uh, come that game in segment two of Lockdown Red Wings. Stay tuned. Got to talk to you guys today about FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your first bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players with with and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Segment two, Locked On Red Wings podcast. Scotty, Derek Lalonde, it was Helene St. James who had tweeted it out that Derek Lalonde said during practice uh, media availability today, that Vili Huso will play at some point during the Western Con Western Canada road trip. And I don't disagree with that decision because at some point you do have to sprinkle him in. Um, the question is where, because obviously the Red Wings are hot. Alex Lyon is hot. Is there, I guess, when is, and is there a good time to play Vili Huso in this next week? Yeah, man, I, I think... Wow, that's, that's a loaded tough. question, isn't it? It's a toughie. Um, I, I mean, instantly your brain looks at it and goes, well, if there's a back-to-back, -back, there you go, and there's not. So you have the Oilers tonight, then you have the Canucks Thursday, you have the Flames Saturday, and you have the Kraken Monday. So you got a, at least two days off between uh, – or one day off, I should say. Two days between all of these games. Um you know, I think Calgary, I guess, is kind of one that jumps out at me. Um, I, I think that would be one, second to last game of the roadie. Uh, you get Huso an opportunity there, uh, but you also have Lion out there to end the road trip still, and you still have Lion against Vancouver, who, A, he's already been in net four and beat, but B, is obviously one of the best teams in the entire NHL this year. I don't think you can put Huso out there. Against the Oilers, you, you're going to want Lion in that for that game. Obviously, we'll preview that one in segment three. Uh, I, I guess just immediate based on competition, I would say one of the last two games, and I think I would lean toward Calgary, but uh, I could hear an argument for Seattle. Um, I The the next two are, are the ones that I, I think you're going to be pretty pressed to, uh, to find room for who's so in. No, I, I actually agree with you. I think Calgary and Seattle are the top two candidates. Uh, I know by the time people are listening to this, the decision may be out. Like I know they usually say around noon, although they're in the West coast now. So it'd probably be like two or three who is going to start in the game. So if you're listening to this and you already know, we apologize. We recorded this the day before, but I agree with you, Scotty, that 
in terms of just and, and dumb down numbers, right? I'm just dumbing down the numbers, but in terms of shot attempt share at five on five, the Calgary Flames are 19th in the league, and this uh, Seattle Kraken I think are like 16th somewhere along uh, along those lines, 15th in the league for shot attempt share because Edmonton and Vancouver are way up there, and obviously Billy Huso coming back off injury already wasn't having a great season to begin with, right? An eight nine three save percentage, I believe. Uh, on the season so far, yeah, eight nine three, and then his his goal save above expected is two point six four. He is positive in that. Remember, that's a that's a cumulative stat, so it it based on the expected goals he's faced throughout the season. But that being positive does show that he's like still making more saves than he probably should. He yeah. struggles with low danger shots, but he's excellent against high danger. So you also want to take kind of take a look at, and we're we're going way too nuanced with this. I understand that, but you also want to look at what teams have the most high danger chances for between these two at uh, between these four teams at five on five. And just like, let's take a quick look at that and see which, so Edmonton Oilers currently in the last 10 games. And by the way, those, those stats I just listed were in the last 10 games. Cause we want to look at who's hot right now. And Calgary, despite being hot is still 19th in shot attempt share at five on five. The Edmonton Oilers lead the league in high danger chances for at 121. That's pretty dang good. Seattle Kraken right now are like sixth in that category. It, it, it's it. There's really no good team to face in that regard. The Vancouver Canucks are 14th, but remember this is where Vili Huso for some reason is the strongest. So it's really difficult to decide because you all you don't want to place him against the team that's going to shell him the most in high danger areas, but for some reason that's the best he does, but he struggles against the low danger, which is something we've harped on, right? You, you kind of want to ease him back in. So I guess I would, despite knowing this about Billy Huso, cause you want to give him the best opportunity to ease back in. You would still want to do him against Calgary, but it's such a tough decision. Obviously in game performances are going to matter too. Like if Alex line goes out there and lays a dud, they're not going to go right for back sure. to him. They're probably going to go right back to go back to Billy Huso in that time at that time. But just based on, not having pre-existing knowledge of how these games are going to play out, I would side with you that, you know, you're going to go with the team that has the lowest shot attempt share in Calgary to give them, give him the best opportunity to get acclimated again in net. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think, again, I, I think it's tough, man. So like if you did Seattle, for instance, if you, if you put them out there for the last game, of the trip, then Lion would not play from February 17th to February 22nd. That's not a crazy break. What is that? Five days. That's not, that's not like catastrophic. So I guess maybe if you want to put him out there for the end, um, because uh, again, if you put him out, if you put Huso out there for Calgary, then you're talking about a four game break for Lion from Vancouver to Seattle. So it's really not, too much of a difference in terms of just, you know, making sure that he's uh, he's ready and, and not getting too much of a layover there, especially right after the All-Star break anyway. Um, I don't know, man. I, I think I would lean Calgary. Just, again, I, I want my best goalie out there against the best competition, so that leaves the last two. And I think I want to end the road trip with uh, with Lion in that as well. well. So and just I, that's, like, super, like – like non-analytical like analysis as well. well like and I understand that but I I think again I, I I'm not going to choose him to to be out there for Edmonton or Vancouver listen so it really just only leaves those two in reality we are going far too nuanced on a what's probably a pretty simple conversation yeah. I think what you said there at the end, even though you made fun of yourself and a little bit of self-deprecation is honestly the most logical part of the arg argument. Edmonton, despite losing two in their last three, is one of the hottest teams in the NHL. They're just coming off a 16-game winning streak. Vancouver is tied for first or just has the first place in the NHL by a point. Why would you put a goalie coming off of injury against either of those two teams? You yeah. wouldn't. So it brings you back to Calgary or Seattle. And just while you were talking, I pulled it up because I know I was waffling over the high danger chances for, which he's historically good against Waffling's this season, while he's word. bad against uh, low danger shots. Well, Calgary 17th and Seattle is 18th in the last 10 games at five on five and low danger shots four low danger chances four. So they're also the easiest to play against in terms of his biggest weakness. So it just, it's the analytics supports it. The just the 
off the top of your head, logic supports it. You go with Seattle or Calgary. But that being said, again, the results are going to drive whatever actually happens. If Alex Lyon is exhausted or worn down or just doesn't have a great game, you're going to see Huso probably instead. So by the time you're listening to this, you probably know. And if it's Villa Huso and he's starting against Edmonton, we're going to look awfully silly. But I hey, think that, our arguments are good. <laughs> again, it, that's more than possible. I, I hope it works out if that's what happens. One thing I am excited for, and again, I'm not trying to end the ride of Alex Lyon prematurely. Like, obviously, you keep going back to him as long as he stays hot. But Alex, or Vili Husso, while was playing subpar hockey, and that cannot be debated, the defense in front of him did not figure their crap out until January. Yeah. So I am looking forward to seeing if Vili Husso can rebound behind a defense defensive structure that's more consistent. For sure. So that's something I am looking sure. forward to in his start whenever he does get it. Uh, Scott, we got to go to segment three. And when we do come back for segment three, we will preview the game against the Edmonton Oilers. So stay tuned to Locked on Red Wings. It's almost the halfway point. In fact, it's actually past the halfway point of the NHL season. And the Detroit Red Wings are firmly in a wild card spot tied for first one point behind third in the Atlantic division. I just like saying it. So I'm going to keep saying it uh, regardless of where they are in the current standings. I want to remind you that you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the lockdown NHL network. Sleeper is the number one choice for the daily for our daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like Jake Wallman doing the gritty uh, or Lucas Raymond with just a phenomenal game of the year, goal of the year candidate goal will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on Sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Red Wings fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code Lockdown NHL and you'll get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Segment three, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Scotty, we got a preview of the Edmonton Oilers. This is the team the Detroit Red Wings already faced once this season. Uh, got to see a Connor McDavid goal in person, which was really sick. But that was unfortunately in a game where Alex Lyon had to be Alex Lyon and had to make 40-plus saves. As That's right. the, That's they right. were. That was in the midst. I think that was their ninth win in a row at the time after yeah. they fired Jay Woodcroft, got a new head coach in the building. They were clicking on all cylinders. Red Wings were able to force overtime because of Alex Lyon. But in the end, the Oilers did come out on top. You know, how have things changed, if at all, since then, Scotty, with the Edmonton Oilers, now that we're heading to their barn? Well, yeah, I mean, like you mentioned it earlier, they've uh, they finally lost. They, they <laughs> streak <laughs> got it. So, like, that's really the biggest thing. They have finally lost a hockey game. They've actually lost two. Is it two in their last three? Two in their last, two in their last three. Yep. Yeah. So, um, you they they are you know capable of losing hockey games again, which is Woo! it gives you yeah a little bit of a little bit more optimism when they're in the middle of a like one of the biggest heaters in the history of the sport. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, that's honestly probably thing number one. Uh, just over the streak, obviously a lot of things changed, and we kind of talk about talked about those when we played them uh, in January. You know, like they finally have gotten a solid amount of goaltending and a solid amount of production out of goaltending. Obviously, uh, Pickard being one of those. Uh, Red Wings legend has been – Pretty darn solid for them. I think he's got uh, over 900. I think last time I looked, it was like 906, actually. Good for him, by the way. I'm, I'm happy that Pickard's yeah, like, having a nice bounce back year. Absolutely. So that's been a big reason for their success. The defense has picked up a little bit, obviously, in front of him as well. Um, but yeah, that was you know early in the season. Obviously, they have all this top-end talent, uh, but a lot of goals against and just in general, a lot of slower start to some of the stars they were relying on as well. And then the reason they were firing on all cylinders there was pretty, you know, good enough defense, pretty darn solid goaltending and the stars doing what the stars do over there. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, yeah, I mean, just the the fact that they're human and they're finally 
uh, losing hockey <laughs> games, but uh, the team as a whole is honestly not too different from the last time you played them, what, three, four weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, like, I could go down the line here of Edmonton Oilers, like, McDavid at 71 points, Drysaddle at 60, Hyman at 48, that's a point per game. Like, they're just, they're they're the Edmonton Oilers, and you know exactly what you're going to get. I think this is a really good test for the Red Wings uh, defensive style that they really established in January. Obviously, we saw the result of that the first time early in January, uh, when they, like I already mentioned, just shelled the Red Wings in shots. The Edmonton Oilers in the last 10 games are the best team in the league at high danger shot attempts, or chances for rather, where the Red Wings are a top five team when it comes to fewest shot, high danger shot attempts allowed. So I think it's going to be a really like, you know, unstoppable force move, meets immovable object in that regard. The Edmonton Oilers are really good at everything offensively. Like I'm not going to try and say there's a flaw in their offensive game because there isn't. It's their defense and goaltending historically. That has been their kryptonite, although, like, to Scotty's credit, that's part of the reason why they've seen success lately is the defense and goaltending has gotten a lot better. But there isn't a lot you can really look towards as terms of weakness on their offense. A top 10 power play, a top 10 penalty kill as well. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see how they manage that. And we both know that that's going to be more mean more at Cider and Jake Woolman are going to be playing in every single one of their shifts against Dry Saddle and McDavid. And, I mean, they held him to one goal. <laughs> last time they came to town. So, I mean, there's that, which is honestly kind of commendable. It's kind of crazy that you can say it's commendable to hold a guy to one goal, but that's just how good McDavid is. So it's really going to come down to that. You're going to see a lot of ice time for Moritz Sider and Dry Settle. You're going to need a big step-up game from Petrie and Sherratt, who get their fair share. I hesitate to say fair share, but they get their share of difficult matchups as well. You're going to need them to really not get caved in against tough matchups this game. And then the third pair, you're just going to need, I mean, Olimata's pretty sound in the defensive zone and their sheltered minutes, but we need a big defensive game from Gostas Bear, like a big defensive game. And that's not something he's known for. He's, he's known for his offense, but he's made errors a lot recently. We need him to settle it down. Like that's going to be the key in this game is you need your defense to play its best game ever. And you just need your offense to continue. Offense doesn't get a lot of shots, but they're really good at finishing. So I'm not really concerned about the forwards and the offense scoring goals. I'm concerned about the defense holding the Edmonton Oilers at bay. So they got to play their best game of the season. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, even last time they played each other, you know, if we want to compare and contrast, like that was a game where, you know, people made fun of us and gave us heat because we, like, we came on here and we're like, hey, the defense was like pretty solid and we gave up like 40 shots or whatever. But, you know, when you looked at the – the high danger versus low danger, like that was that was more what we were referencing for that game, right? Like they pushed a lot of the shots. There was a lot high quantity of shots, but not a lot of high quality of shots. So I'm, I'm to your point earlier, I'm really interested in what type of uh, defensive sets and just strategies, you know, kind of what the game plan is. Is it something similar? Where okay, it's Lion. We know he can stop the sh the the um, low danger stuff. So let's keep that going and, and try to push everything to the outside or, or is it going to be trying to just stop the amount of shots total? I'm not really sure how, you know, give them respect, how possible that really is <laughs> with the Oilers to limit total number of shots just in general. So I guess that's my biggest, uh, my biggest question going into this game is just um, what is, what is the game plan? Is it try to repeat the first time you played, or are there going to be uh, a certain amount of adjustments to maybe try and just stop total shots in general? Well, and you just said it, right? The first time these two teams met, they didn't give up a ton of high danger opportunities. You think about the goals that the, the, the Oilers did score. I mean, the one big one, the one that I was just talking about, McDavid's goal that happened against Cider and Wallman's line happened on a miscommunication at the blue line where Wallman thought it was inches offside. away from being offside. Yeah, it was just like right, a yeah. discombobulated broken play that bounced the Edmonton Oilers' way and you know, you give McDavid any amount of space and he's going to finish. So, I mean, that was the real di difference maker. Also, Olimata scored in that game. I just want to shout it out. Olimata, love that. Uh, so that's what it comes down to is can, and that's, you know, again, full circle moment. Talk about what we talked about at the beginning of the segment. You're going to be limiting those high danger chances that they get in abundance, but you're very good at limiting. Unstoppable force meets a movable object in that regard. So it's going to be whatever, whichever one of those two, parts of the pendulum it, it, that comes out on top is going to be what determines this hockey game. Yeah. Yeah. I don't disagree. So, all right, Scott, you got any final thoughts, buddy? 
Oh, we got it. Robbie Fabry's going to miss the game against Edmonton. Almost forgot. Oh, yes. Yeah. He, uh, he's reasons. out for personal reasons. They said he could be back for Vancouver, but he's going to miss the start of the road trip. Yeah. Hope everything's okay. Yes. We, uh, well wishes to him for whatever's going on. Uh, Nolan Stevens also, if you even knew he was with the Red Wings, had his contract terminated. He was not getting a ton of minutes in Grand Rapids. And with the return of the dog, Matt Luff looming, it seems like it's around the corner. It seems like uh, those minutes were probably going to get even far and fewer in between. Sure. So he's gone. And that's it. That's your news and updates, news and notes. I think so. Yeah. We ball. We do ball. We'll be back with a new episode recapping the game against the Edmonton Oilers tomorrow. Same time, same place. It's your team every, every day. day.